In this final video, we're going to talk all about how Show It connects to WordPress to power your blog. If you're not familiar with blogging or you haven't used Show It and WordPress together before, it's pretty simple. Basically, Show It controls the front end styling, how the blog looks, and you actually blog and put your content in the back end of WordPress. The two talk together to pull in your content and create a very visually compelling blog. There's a couple specific things that I want you to know starting off. First is that if you have a blog somewhere else, maybe you had one on Squarespace or Wix or another platform and you want show it to migrate that blog over, make sure you're on the advanced blog tier and request a blog migration. If you're just starting out with a fresh blog, you can be on the advanced tier if you'd like, if you want custom plugins. If not, you can just be on the basic blog tier. Once you've picked your blog tier, you'll go down to underneath our pages and we have our blog templates and I'll quickly explain how these work. First, this is the blog homepage. This is going to pull in the latest posts. This is what it looks like when there's actually content in there. Now, because this is just placeholders for when you actually have your own content, it looks a little funny in the back end, but I promise once your live blog is connected, it'll all look great. Again, you can refer to this demo page for an example. You'll want to go ahead and delete this after you get your template installed. This was just to show you what the blog looked like when you were picking out the template. Same thing for the single post and same thing for the category. The single post is what someone sees when they click into to read the blog post. A title is going to populate here. This is where the featured image will be and then your post content. All of this is going to expand and adapt once you actually get the live blog connected and WordPress is going to pull in the content and show it's going to automatically size everything to fit. The category, this is if someone clicks on a specific category, it's going to display all the posts that are tagged with that category here, like this example. You also have a custom search page. In addition to pulling in content on the main blog pages, Show It can also pull in blog content to some of the other pages on your site. And I'll show you two different ways to do that. One is by picking your favorite blog posts and linking directly to them. There's a canvas already set up for you. If you go down past blog templates and you look in your site canvases, it is category feature one and category feature two. Category feature two is set up so that you can pick two of your favorite posts under whatever category you choose. In this example, travel. You're going to swap out the photo to match the cover image. You're going to update the title and then you're going to link it directly to the blog post by changing the link type from page to URL and then posting the URL to the specific blog post here. You'll do that for each of the posts. And then for view more, we want to view more posts under that category. And the way you would do that is switch this from page to URL and you'll do forward slash category forward slash the name of your category in this example travel. If your category is two words, you'll put a hyphen instead of a space. If it was travel tips, it would be travel dash tips like this. That is manual. You can add this canvas wherever you'd like to feature those blog posts and duplicate it if you'd like to get another set and feature another category. Category one feature, this one's a little bit different it is going to pull in content dynamically. Remember when I said show it and WordPress talk to each other, this canvas would be used for if you want to bring in the most recent posts from a specific category. So this is going to change every time you update your WordPress site with a new blog post under this category. The way this works is that these are set as placeholders. I go to image. We'll set this as the WordPress featured image here, the WordPress featured image. This is going to be the post title. This one will also be a post title. So now WordPress knows to replace these pieces of content with the content from WordPress. Then all you have to do is separate these out. WordPress knows that these are two different posts. You're going to select everything, click on the three dots here, and then click on add canvas view. Then you'll just move them into a view. You'll do the same thing for the second set. Click on both of those, click on add canvas view and move them into the view. This is telling WordPress, hey, these are two separate posts. Here's where you place the image for post one, and here's where you place the image for post two. For view more, you can connect this the same way that we did the other ones. You can go to click actions, and then you will go to URL, and then forward slash category, forward slash the name of the category, so style, just like that. The last thing that you'll want to do on your site canvas for dynamic content is go over to canvas, make sure it says post view lookup, and then you're just going to name the category. If you're not using the category style and you're using the category travel tips, you'll post that here. So travel tips, you don't have to worry about the hyphen here for two words, and then just make sure it says number of posts two, and then you're good to go. It just has to match whatever category this is pulling from. 
Next, you're ready to add this canvas to any of the pages where you want it to pull in your dynamic content. On the homepage, we already have this canvas added. In order to tell WordPress to pull in content to this homepage, we actually have to make it a blog template. It has to live down here with the other blog pages. The way that we do that is click on these three dots here, and then we're going to click copy to blog template. This is going to give us a different homepage. So now we have homepage one. We don't want this to say home dash one because that's going to mess up the linking to the homepage. Basically we'll go to home and we're going to change this to say, I just like to put an X at the front. So we know that we're not going to update this homepage and that we're going to update the one on the blog template. I'm just going to hit save and then I'll go down to the blog template homepage, rename that one and just make sure that it says home just like it did before. Then hit save. The next thing that you'll want to do is go up to template info, go to page, Make sure no canvases are selected so that I can see this template info over here on the right. WordPress template, we're going to switch this to where it says front page. Perfect. Then you'll want to go ahead and publish your changes. Then we'll go to the WordPress side and make some changes on there. If you haven't logged into WordPress before, it's really easy. You're just going to go to your domain on our example, tailormade.com forward slash WP hyphen admin. When you do that, you'll get to a screen that looks like this, and then you just sign in with the same details that you use to log in to show it. When you log in to show it, your dashboard will look something like this. This is a blog testing account, but it's probably a little different than yours. You'll navigate over to where it says pages on the left hand side. These are all the pages that we have right now in the test account, but don't worry, you are going to add a new page and you are just going to label it home and that's it. You're just going to type home up there and hit publish. Then you'll go back to your WordPress dashboard. And there's a couple other settings that we need to change so that WordPress knows to talk to the home page under the blog template and not the home page under the static regular show it page. Go down to settings and then you're going to go all the way to the bottom where it says show it. And you want to make sure that this is checked under home page, the very last one. Load the WordPress home page instead of the show it home page. We're going to make sure that's checked. And then you're going to save changes. Next, you're going to go in the same flyout menu under settings. You're going to click on reading. And now for home page, you're going to select the page that you created, we created home. And then for the post page, you're just gonna make sure that that still says blog. Then you can go ahead and save your changes. And this is gonna tell WordPress to use the home page that we've created under the blog template instead of the one up here that's static. If you were to add some dynamic blog content like the um, featured category here, the filed under, and it wasn't on the home page, all you would need to do is go back into WordPress. You're gonna to go to your pages, and again, we have lots of pages in here, but say that we wanted to add it to the about page. We would go add new page, make sure we put about, that's it, nothing else. We'll hit publish. Then we'll go over to show it. For about, we have to copy that over to our blog template. We're gonna click on here and copy to blog. Now we have about, you can go through and rename it. You want the one that you actually want to use, the one under blog templates to be about, and you want this one to have an X in front or name it something else so that your links still connect properly. But you'll click on your about page and then under WordPress template, you're gonna click custom and then you will do page dash the name of the page, so about. Then you'll go ahead and click on publish and that's gonna connect WordPress and tell it to use the blog template for about instead of the static about page. I know that that was a lot of information to cover, but if you want a recap or a detailed list of step-by-step -step instructions, you can go to the help docs down here in the bottom right-hand corner, and then just search WordPress homepage, and it will go through it again for you. It's got some screenshots in there and some lists of the different steps for you to take. In order to put dynamic content or blog content on a different page, like the about page I just talked about, search custom WordPress page on the help docs and it will bring up an article that again lists out the steps for you. Moving on to actually creating a post, you're going to go back into your dashboard and click over on the very right to posts and then add a new post. I've already got some test posts in here, so I will use one of these as an example, starting with this first one. Here we're just putting in a title, then you'll put in your actual post content here using this plus button. You can add paragraphs, you can add quotes or different heading styles, photographs. You can even add galleries. This is an example of a secondary heading. You'll fill up this block with your post content. Now, if you want to write in a different platform and paste everything in, that's totally fine. Or if you prefer to write in WordPress, that works too. Remember, it looks a little funny on this end, but show it is going to control the styling. If you click on preview and we preview this in a new tab, we can see the template, how it's pulling in our post. So this is what it's actually going to look like based on the template. 
which is pretty cool. When you're happy with your post, there's something else that I like to recommend, and that is Yoast SEO. This is really going to help you with search engine optimization on your blog post. Having a blog is one of the best things that you can do for SEO, and this kind of just teaches you SEO while you write. It's very helpful. You'll go up to WordPress first, and then go down on the very right-hand side and click on Plugins. Then you'll scroll down to the very bottom and yours will say activate under Yoast SEO. You're going to go ahead and activate that. And then you'll be able to see on your posts when we go back to all posts and the one that we were just working on, you'll be able to see what I see down here on the bottom where it says Yoast SEO. I'm going to teach you really quickly how to use this, starting with a focus key phrase. This is going to be the word that we want to rank for. Using this post as an example, I want to say I want to rank for a Southwestern wedding. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that as our keyword. You're going to know your keywords best and what you're trying to rank for, but we'll just use this one as an example. This is going to show us a preview of what our article is going to look like on both desktop and mobile. Then we need to write a meta description. We want to make sure that we include our keyword phrase here, Southwestern wedding. And we also want to make sure it's descriptive and entices people to click and read our article. So typed view Southwestern wedding inspo from Julia and Jonathan's wedding. Now this is okay, but we have this orange bar and we actually want this to turn green. So that just means that I need to add a little bit more. So I've added a romantic spring wedding in the desert hills and this gave us the green bar and that's just saying, hey, your meta description has enough words in it and it's filling up the space. Moving down, we can click on the SEO analysis and expand this open. This is my favorite part. I call it the red light green light system because that's essentially what it is. It tells you things that you did well, things you need to work on and things you definitely should fix, which is really helpful as you start to use this tool more and more, you'll just start to do these things naturally. Let's start with the things we did well. One, we have images on our post. We love to see that. Our key phrase length is good. It's not too long. It's not too short. Remember I said we wanted to use the key phrase in the meta description. We know our meta description length is good because we got that green bar. We haven't used this key phrase before. You want to make sure you're not always using the same key phrase. This is because eventually your posts will start to actually compete with each other. And also people aren't always searching for something that's super exact. They may use different wording. They may be looking for slightly different things. And you want to cast your net wide so that you can rank for a bunch of different keywords instead of just focusing on one. Next, our key phrase is in the slug. The slug is defaulted to the title of the post. And since we took our key phrase from the title, it's going to be in there, which is great. Things we can improve, our image key phrase, we can add alt attributes to our image and it's recommended that you use the key phrase you want to rank for. Then we have key phrase in the SEO title. It says the exact match of the focus key phrase is in the title, but it's not at the beginning. This is one of the situations where Yoast is a robot and it's trying to write for a robot, but we always want to prioritize readability. I maybe could play around with this and move this to the beginning. Maybe I'll say a Southwestern wedding and I'll take Julia and Jonathan's name out and say at the Desert Hills Resort in Scottsdale, Arizona. That still makes sense as a reader and we've moved our keyword further to the front. Let's see how Yoast feels about that. Awesome. We turn that light green. It's no longer warning us about it. Now on the things that we definitely need to fix. Outbound and internal links. This is super easy. Outbound is linking to anything that's not hosted on your site. Maybe you're linking to an Instagram profile or maybe a partner that you've worked with, a venue, something like that. Internal links is linking to anything hosted on your own site. This could be another blog post, your contact page, services page, anything like that. Then we have the key phrase in the introduction. Since we just have Latin filler text, we probably would have naturally used our keyword in there, but if not, it's just a good reminder to make sure that you use it within the first paragraph. Then we have key phrase density. This is kind of along the same lines. We haven't used the key phrase more than once. We want to use the key phrase in the heading and the subheadings. This is an example of a heading right here. This is an H2. So somewhere in your headings, you want to make sure that you're using your key phrase. And then our text length, this one is basically saying that our blog post is too short. We want to have a minimum of about 300 words for whatever reason, Google has decided that that is the magic number. So just make sure that you are providing enough context to your posts, especially if they're photo heavy. And then the SEO title width, it's just saying that our title is a little bit long and it's getting cut off and it recommends trying to shorten it down a little bit. So that is Yoast in a nutshell. When you are happy with that, you can go through and adjust some post settings. We're going to go over here to post at the very top. And then this is where you can add in your categories. Remember we had style. So we're going to click add new category and we did style. That's our new category. So we're going to click add new category. And we have this one categorized under style. And then the other was travel. I only recommend categorizing in one to maybe two categories. If you add it in more, your post starts to show up everywhere and it confuses users a little bit, but having two is fine. So I'm going to click add new category. The name is travel and then go ahead and add it. Perfect. 
Then you can go down and add some tags. This helps if you have the search bar function on your site. It also just helps bring up this post in relation to your key phrase. I've added some tags here. You maybe want to add about 10 to 15 tags that relate to the content of your post. Then you can select your featured image. If I click on here, I can replace it. This is going to bring up the WordPress media library. Note that the WordPress media library is different than the show it media library. So you'll have to upload things separately. And this is where you can add that alt text in your captions. This featured image is what's going to appear inside the show it template as the cover image for your post. It can be a photo that's inside the post already, or it can be a completely separate photo. Totally up to you. Then down here, you can write an excerpt. This is optional. Currently, the TaylorMade template doesn't display excerpts, but you can go ahead and write one if you'd like. If you don't, and there's somewhere that the excerpt is displayed, it's just going to pull in the first couple lines of your post. Then you can go ahead and preview it, make sure everything's looking okay, and when you're ready, you can go ahead and hit publish. Thanks for sticking with us. I hope that these videos have been really helpful. If there's anything that we can help you with, don't hesitate to reach out, and thank you so much for purchasing the TaylorMade template.